Hey folks, it's Max here and welcome to your latest Seaverse video on the TEW 2020 public beta, number 16 now. A few hours on from the last one that you put out, which was yesterday's video. A few more changes towards it, as I say, fixed out the issue with road agents and referees not automatically assigning for uh, shows, so that's a good start. There's a few other things in there, but yeah, show by, uh, sorry, beta by beta, we seem to be getting there. But as I say, Seaverse, pay-per-view time by the way with TCW, Total Championship Wrestling, and this is Malice in Wonderland. So I think the plan with this series is we're going to do Malice in Wonderland, we'll do a few more TV, uh, and we'll conclude it at the next pay-per-view. So then it gives you an idea of what the Seaverse is like, the characters that are in TCW in particular, and it might be something you guys would like to do. I feel if I'm going to do a Seaverse, it more than likely will be a lesser company, or a... Road to Glory. But, let's just jump into it. Let's see what happens. So, pay per view, we're on US Free Choice, and we are arena wise at the Dust Bowl Fields, which is going to get us an attendance of up to, up to 50,000, but 46,000, and 70 fans are expected. So, much bigger. The difference between a normal show and a pay per view, you can see here 13 segments. Quite an interesting card, I don't mind showing the, the spoilers of what's going to happen in this particular show. Let's see if we can have much success. So 43,211 turn up, and we start off with a, a tag team boot, a rematch actually from the last show, but it is just again getting them on pay per view and giving them a good opportunity. It was a decent matchup that saw Divine Fortune defeat the Elite in 10.52, when Chance Fortune, him and Daryl Divine defeated Eddie Chandler in this instance with a stroke of luck. A 58 rating. Uh, Eddie Chandler and Nate Johnson got a tag team specialist bonus. The storyline continued. Probably will end after this. But everybody seems to be quite evenly matched in that 50 to 60 kind of bracket in terms of a ring performance. But I just felt like it was a good chance to put the babyface team over here. And could they be looking at a future TCW tag team championship match? Next up we had my avatar, Big Tex avatar. And he's hyping up the matchup between his client, Texas Pete, and the Avalanche Takano, who we've just signed from Japan. So, a segment rating of 25, Texas Pete is getting better at his gimmick. That match was really just to give Avalanche a debut, but more importantly, get Texas Pete more over with the crowd. Terrible match, though. Texas Pete defeats the Avalanche Takano in 10 17 by pinfall with a Lone Star drop. Takano suffered cracked ribs, or sustained them. A 34 performance for him, he's very good technically it seems in here, a very good wrestler, but not the overness, so that was why he was doing the job here to Texas Pete. Takano debuted his wrestling machine gimmick and that got an initial rating of great. Uh, unfortunately it did cool the crowd a little bit with a 38 rating. Thanks Dean Daniels. And Texas Pete now has backstage heat. Fantastic. Next up, we have the manager of Freddie Huggins, that is of course Laura Catherine Huggins. And in this segment, she is basically, saw that the one man army is in the ring and says, you've been on a roll, but I think that my client, I think it's her partner, Freddie Huggins, is going to take you on and he is going to defeat you. So a 64, two guys that are on a wee bit of a wave of momentum, which should hopefully lead to a decent matchup. And it did, I'm actually quite happy with that. About they had great heat and decent wrestling, Freddie Huggins picks up the win over the one-man army in 11.35 with a Huggins kiss. 68 is good, both guys with 61 and 66 respectively, and of course the great chemistry between Freddie and Laura. But yeah, just he's been performing well, and I just felt like he was the man for the, the win here, so he takes a, a W going forward. Next up we had the Tag Team Championships on the line. And about the great heat and decent wrestling, Mighty Mighty defeated the Behemoths in 10.09 when Killer Shark was disqualified when fighting Mighty Mo. So the champions disqualify themselves to retain, that is of course Killer Shark and Titan. A 61 for this one. It was a wild brawl and it wasn't great, the crowd weren't buzzing and ready for action. But still pretty respectable, best performance here from the Mighty Mo. Next up, we have an over-the-top entrance for the spectacular Greg Gage as he prepares to defend his TCW 
Television Championship, but I got a 47. And his matchup had good heat and decent wrestling. And as he said he would, he defeats Benny Benson in 15-23 with a uh, submission victory, the Proton Lock. And it's the 11th defence of the TCW Television Championship. So he's a better performance with a 64 against Benny Benson's 57. They meet in the middle with a 62. But yeah, a good victory for the arrogant heel. Next up, we had a matchup between Sammy Batch and Jay Chorv. And it was fantastic heat and good wrestling as Jay Chorv defeated Sammy Batch in 2040 by using underhanded tactics. Both guys were a reasonably good performance here. It got the crowd hotter. The storyline did lose a little bit of heat, but a very successful 73 rating. Will this have a factor in later on's events? Possibly. We go backstage though, after the break, and Jay Chord cuts a promo just saying I've shown that I have defeated this guy. I deserve to be the next TCW champion, and I'm going to put my name in the hat to get that opportunity. And if not, I'm just going to take that opportunity. So an 89 rating. We hype up our main event, though disappointingly nothing happened in it. It was just a hype package and it got a 63, so that's disappointing there. Loses the heat on our main event storyline. And about that had fantastic heat and great wrestling. I Darren Andrews defeat Will Hawkins in 3304 with a flying body press, allowing Aaron Andrews to make the sixth defence of his TCW World Heavyweight title. So keeping the champion chip on the babyface Aaron Andrews, giving him a lot of time in 83, and that might be my highest rating of a match so far, possibly, which is worrying. But as I say, it does always take a time. I mean, every save to build up, no, but works, and then eventually you get the ratings. No bother. Maybe not in this one in particular, but usually. After the matchup, though, Andrews is celebrating, and Jay Child comes down and beats the hell out of him. Both guys came across well, but unfortunately, a lack of anything interesting happening in this segment was a problem, costing it down to a 67 rating. So overall, the show did run 80 which does increase our pop in 11 regions, it's actually one of my better shows I've done. It tells me there's a lot of angles that need to have a look, look at and go, right, it's maybe not really worth using here. I was prone to using the hype video angle, that doesn't seem to work. I'm prone to using the spectacular entrance angle, doesn't seem to work. And I'm prone for the beatdown post-match on a champion, not overly worked there. But at least it puts us in a good position. The main thing is, it puts us in a good position going forward. We've gained pop, and the overall show rating was very good there. Most relying on, as I say, that main event matchup and some of the promos run about it. As I say, the, the short promo certainly helped as well, and a good co main event. But overall, I'm happy with it, and as I say, it's always weird because I think when you get into this pay per view, Malice in Wonderland, you, everybody's going to have the same kind of matches because of the way the storylines are in the, the C verse. But this gives us a wee opportunity to kind of branch out a little bit and kind of go in our own direction and see where we go from there. So we'll skip here to the 4th week of January. Uh, really struck gold with the show, 43,200 revenues when over the attendance. Takano, if we can click on him, left the ring under his own power. So he's basically can still wrestle I think for a week, that's fine. So drug testing is 6,000. A million, 1.25 in terms of viewers, but the buy rate was 2.51, good, good, good. And yeah, he's going to get all the, the heat in the world for that one, just regarding that. And as you can see their injury, I think the best way to start to check that is in terms of length, if I can find it, medical, 6 days, and can be worked through, so that's fine. That's fine. As I say, this is all going to change. Um, when the full game comes out, I don't think we get to see the new thing in action, the new interface, until it's time. But yeah, a lot of people pissed off they didn't make it to pay-per-view. Well, a lot of people. Yikes. It wouldn't be a maxi save on the TEW if there wasn't morale issues. But anyway, that's us for this particular show. You can see there, is that a wee bit again am I, am I seeing? 72 previously. 73s and 74s, so yeah, it seems like they are going to be a company that's going to be quite easy to get to big if you manage them well. Uh, so that may be something worse for you, and if you're, if you're looking to go a CVR's company, that TCW could be that for you. But cheers for watching, much appreciated. 
As I say, we'll have a couple more episodes of this before the full game launches, and of course we will have every couple of days the um, WWF 1983 series. As I say, that will be continuing on to the main game, and of course after the main game comes out we'll have some All Elite Wrestling, and we'll also have some WWE slash NXT on the Twitch channel, which I think, when I'm thinking about it, I'm either going to just import the stream over, or if there's a lot of BS in the stream, we're just talking crap, because uh, I can sway off and talk about football. I might just go over the save on here. So basically, going through the cards, the shows, explain everything, see if maybe people like that format, and we'll, we'll go for there. But there'll be plenty of series over the next couple of months and years as well. So, as always, thanks for watching, much appreciated. Leave thumbs up is appreciated as well. Hit the sub button, and that'll drop any TW video into your inbox if you go hunting for it. And of course, check out the regular places, the Grey Dog Software Forums, the Fantasy Booker subreddit, and of course, TWDB. Dot com, I believe it is, but just search it on Twitter and you'll get the website from there. Uh, it's Curbsomp Gaming's website and it is absolutely fantastic for TW resources, whether it be 2020 or 2016. But just watching, stay safe, and hopefully, I'll see you for the next show. Well, that's WWF for this. I don't actually know. Bye bye.